Check. Check. Good morning everyone. I would like to welcome you all for the Sabbath school service. To begin with the song service, let's all turn our hymn books to hymn number 3939, Lord in the Morning. Number 534, will your anchor hold? Sweet. 
614 sound the battle cry song we will sing song number 618 stand up stand up for jesus 618 
Put on the whole armor of God, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Ephesians 6, 11 to 17. The full armor of God is essential to protect us from the unseen foe. Make sure you wear it wherever you go or whatever you do. You are the Lord's ambassadors, so be fearless in your armor. Allow the Lord to fight the battles for you, and he will show you favor. With this lovely thought in mind, I want to welcome each one of you present here and as well as the ones watching online. Have a blessed Sabbath day. Our opening song will be hymn number 412.
let's pray. Our loving and living, merciful Father, thank you for <coughs> giving a wonderful Sabbath day in each one of our life, Father. Father, yes, Father, our life is full of sin, but thou hast covered with the snow and with your blood, Father, that we are redeemed and we are saved, Father. We no need to worry about that, Father. Bless us and bless the program that has been prepared by the Sabbath School Department. Bless each individual and help us to understand and take the meaning out of it. All these blessings I ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and a very happy Sabbath. My name is Christina Ferraz. I am 21 years old. I grew up in a pastor's home and I learned about God, but I did not learn about his seven day Sabbath. My father, an evangelical pastor, taught me to respect every religion, but he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't set his fo foot in the Adventist church that was in our city near Luanda. So he wouldn't allow me nor any of the family members to go to the Adventist church because he had heard some negative rumors and he was frightened by that. As a young adult, I had to move to another city for work. There I studied the Bible every day with my co-workers at lunch. The study was led by an Adventist. Apart from him, everyone else thought that the Sabbath was on Sunday. Now everybody wanted, now this got confusion to me. So I wanted to know more and learn more. So the person who was leading the study, he handed over me a book and a set of uh, Adventist recorded sermons. I read the book and heard the sermon. A conflict broke in me. I wanted, I wanted to, uh, a conflict broke in me and I was confused as to when to keep the Sabbath, on a Sunday or a Saturday. So I began to study more. One day when I came home, I saw that my relatives heard this sermon and my uncle shouted, who is this pastor? He is so intelligent. He's speaking exactly what is written in the Bible. And at that point, I thought to myself, even I want to study what is written in the Bible only. Then as I began to study the Bible on my own, as I read, I resolved that not to follow any human traditions, but to seek the will of God. Returning to my hometown, I asked for a meeting with my father and the other elders of the church. I spoke about the seventh day Sabbath, sanctified at the creation week and the memorialized by God's fingers on the stone of the Ten Commandments. I reminded them that when Jesus was on this earth, he kept the seventh day Sabbath and um, his disciples follows, followed his examples once he returned to heaven. So I asked all of them, why don't you teach this and follow this? As my father listened, the other church leaders acknowledged that they knew the seventh day is the Sabbath, but they couldn't give any valid reason as to why they kept the Sabbath on a Sunday. They told, one of them told me, you will lose your missionary position in our church. I said, if I be a missionary, I will still teach the truth what is written in the Bible, that is the seventh day message. Dismayed, the church leaders sent a letter at the local church saying that I was their member and would not become an Adventist. Nevertheless, I continued to study the Bible uh, by the, uh, with the Adventist. Today, I am married to the man who taught me about the Sabbath during the Bible studies. And I'm glad that uh, three of my brothers are baptized and my mother and my father are taking Bible classes. And I hope and I have the faith that even they will be baptized soon. I request all of you to pray for my uh, family and other friends so that they will seek only the will of God. Part of this quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will be help established for project in Christina's home country of Angola including a seven-day Adventist school in Luanda near where she lives and an Adventist church and elementary school in the city of Belez, a domestic violence and counseling center in the city of Lom, and a men's dormitory at the Adventist University in Angola in the city of Huambo. Thank you for planning a generous offering.
happy Sabbath to you all. I can't stay without thanking him for the goodness he's doing every day in my life. Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil because he gives me each day new life to live so that I will praise him every day. This is the meaning of the Tamil song which I'm going to sing.
Our nature talk this morning will be in the form of dialogues, or you can consider it to be a small skit sort of a thing. And uh, we just begin now. I can take this. Hello. Renola, my science student, where are you? Yeah, come, come. Yes, sir, here I am. So how's your preparation going on in your science subject? It's going on well, sir. That's nice. I would like to ask you some questions today. Yes, sir, sure. Okay, so feel free, relax, <laughs> have a seat if you want to. Uh, uh, there is a scene of someone, uh, can just put that, yes, Renola, can you see that glass, in that glass there is, there are two things, one is the orange, the other also is an orange, one is with the peel and the other is without a peel. So, I would like to start with a few simple questions first. Out of the two, which one is heavier? Sir, I'm not a kid. That's such a childish question. Obviously, the one with the peel is heavier. Okay, that's right. That's right. Okay, then um, observe that carefully and tell me, if you say it's heavier, why is it floating? Tell me, you studied throughout your year, right? Now at least I'm expecting something, a right answer from you. Think about it. Why is the heavy orange, orange which has more mass, uh, or uh, why is it floating? Tell me. Okay, sir, are you a Christian? Why are you asking? Yes, I am. I am. Okay, then can I ask you a question to answer your question? Yeah, tell me. Okay, so in Matthew 11:30, Jesus tells that my yoke is easy and my burden is lighter. And he's telling it to take his burden and his yoke and still be lighter. Isn't it supposed to be heavier? You said, Jesus said, take my yoke and burden and it's lighter just wait just give me one minute do one thing you're trying to test me I know I know you're trying to test me uh, okay I'll do one thing I will answer my question will you be able to answer your question yes that sounds fair enough Okay, sit, I'll explain you why that orange is floating. You see, it is not because of the weight. No doubt the weight of the orange, which has a peel, is heavy. It is all about the density. Now what is density, Renola? It is a ratio of mass upon volume. It is a ratio of mass that is, you can, in layman's term, you can consider mass to be weight. So it is mass upon volume. Little maths here. Let's consider a ratio, 40 upon 10. Okay? 40 upon 10. That is mass upon volume. Cancel the zeros. What's the answer? Four. So here, just as an example, the density of a substance right now is 4. Let us increase the mass from 40 to 50, 10 more. Okay, so I increase the mass from 40 to 50. I also would like to increase the denominator from 10, but now not just 10 more, but I will increase it to 100. Renola, are you understanding? So 40 upon 10 
the first density gives me 4 and 50 upon 100. Now remember, both are increasing. The 40 becoming 50 and down the volume, which is 10, is now becoming 100. That's too much, right? But make sure that you have understood that both are increasing. So 40 upon 10 gives me 4, 50 upon 100 gives me what? Half. It gives me half. And that is 0 0.5. Are you understanding, Renola? So here, same thing is happening. Now, a few things need to be kept in mind. The density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube. The density of water, take it as one. And as per my example, regarding the numericals, the first one was having less mass with less volume. Answer came out to be four. But the second one, in which both the mass and the volume were increasing, answer came out to be 0 0.5. Is the density decreased even though the mass and volume have increased? but the ratio made the density less. Now I'm going to tell you the real reason why the one with the peel is floating. If you study the peel, orange peel, it has innumerable air pockets. So much of air is in that. It's just like, you know, I'm telling you, Renola, you have a balloon not with air, you put in three, four marbles in it, put it in water, what will happen? Sink. It'll sink. But you take the same balloon now, having the same number of marbles, and you fill in or blow in air, tie it. You know what's going to happen? The balloon will float. So considering all these examples, I hope you're understanding Renola. Okay. So that is the reason why the orange with the peel, though its mass is more, though its weight is more, it will not sink because it has that air pockets in it. Same thing goes for life jackets. The person who's drowning, if he has his life jacket, even though his mass, before he experiences that he's drowning, but putting on the uh, jacket, the life jacket, he's safe, he's floating. Same concept is here too. So now tell me, Renola, what do you say about your answer? Well, to answer my question, it's very simple. I would like to read a verse for you that's taken from Isaiah 59, verses 17. It reads, For he put, for he put on righteousness as a breastplate and an helmet of salvation upon his head, and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. And even in Ephesians 6, 11, it says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Sir, the righteousness of Jesus and his salvation are like the air pockets in the armor he has given to us. That's so nice, Redola. I thought you were just a good science student, but I guess you're a good Bible student as well. So nice. Thanks for that explanation. So here we need to understand the righteousness of God, Jesus Christ, and his salvation is like air pockets that was explained here. What happens is when we have his righteousness, when we have his salvation, which is a gift to us, all we need to do is receive it. We need to ask. And he will give us that armor, armor of God. And if we wear it fully, we'll be able to stand the wiles of the devil. May God bless us with this thought. At this time, the Sabbath school offering will be collected.
enclosing him 529 under his wings. Shall you all pray? Dear merciful Heavenly Father, loving and living God, creator of this universe, we want to thank you, Father, what a wonderful opportunity and privilege you have given to us. As a sinner, you have chosen this Sabbath morning, and you are all able to bring glory and honor to your name, Father. Thank you, Father, for the Sabbath School mission report and uh, nature talk, Father. This moment, very specially, I'd like to pray for the, all the church members, those who are present over here, and those who are online, and those who are on the way to come to the church, Father. Be with the service school lesson discussion pa panel members and the divine service speaker. For all these members, we pray in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. To be useful, you must always give maximum effort. Your attitude and effort are within your control 100% of the time, regardless of the role you play. There is no excuse to give less than your best. Consider your considered position in life. Take the stock of your family, friends, and colleagues. Are you useful to them? Do you generate goodness? For their lives? Whoever how to do you respond when life squeezes you? How do you respond when life squeezes you? Perhaps you are more like an orange than you realize. Thank you all of you for participating and making our Sab School worship a very wonderful and blessed one this morning. Thank you all for coming on time and uh, worshiping with us uh, for Sabbath school. Uh, our lesson study this morning will be taken by Pastor Vara Jacob and Mr. Richard John. May the Lord grant us wisdom as we study his word.
morning church members I want to wish each one of you a very happy sabbath this morning we have come to the ninth lesson in the book of genesis and i'm sure as we're following week by week we've been blessed by every week's lesson this week's lesson is entitled jacob the supplanter it's a very interesting story we all know the story of abraham isaac and jacob so this morning we'll be pondering or discussing a little bit about jacob very interesting and fascinating story before we begin shall we all bow our heads for prayer our father in heaven this morning we want to thank you that you have given us this opportunity and privilege to gather in your house of prayer and worship to glorify your name we pray that you will send your holy spirit to be with each one of us as we see the life of jacob and what lessons we can draw from his experience we pray that you bless our church at large in jesus name we pray amen i'd like to welcome not only our church members but also the online viewers who are who have tuned in or who have logged in to our Salisbury Memorial Church happy that you could be with us jacob the supplanter my father's name is jacob so the J, the word jacob is a very special a uh, name for us i'm called at salisbury park vara but when i used to work outside not in our mission they always call me jacob another name for jacob is yakub yakub they used to call my my father yakub sab yakub it's from the bible itself yakub so jacob the supplanter the title the author gave is because jacob is a person that uh, he comes out second holding the heel of his brother twin brother and uh, he likes to seize the opportunity how many of us like to seize the opportunity you say you give an inch and they take a yard sometimes we'll we'll give them a little bit and they'll take the whole thing usurp or seize something that is not yours so jacob the supplanter let me read the text this morning it's found in genesis 27:36 and esau said is he not rightly named jacob for he has supplanted me these two times he took away my birthright and now look he has taken away my blessings and he said have you not reserved a blessing for me we all require blessings isaac was a miracle child right isaac was a miracle child and then when he had esau and jacob Isaac was a very nice person a good man mild but his wife Rebecca was the opposite she was full of life and boisterous active but whom did she love the most Jacob but Jacob was the opposite of her he was more mild more quieter person than Esau Isa was we say he was a very skillful hunter but Isaac was very quiet person but he liked the opposite he liked a person who was more lively who was always going out hunting probably he liked meat Isaac you know, I mean Isa used to hunt and come here and his father loved him they say opposite attract one another so we see how right there in the family it was they showed favoritism 
favoritism in the family. This morning we have uh, Pastor Richard John with us. We're happy you could be part of the panel. I want to ask Richard a question. Do you think we have dysfunctional families in our church? Now, let me tell you a little bit about dysfunctional families. It is where like parents show favoritism to their own children. One loves the younger one, one loves the middle one, one loves the older one. Do we show that? Do we have favoritisms? Do we uh, fight? Do we force our views on them? Um, what do you think? Do we have dysfunctional families in our church? I think definitely we have this uh, dysfunctional in the families as well. We, we remember in our families how we do it. So when I remember uh, Rebecca, I think she would have thought that she can fulfill the plan of God like uh, she believed uh, that the second son in the family would rule the nation, would, would become the king or would have good enough knowledge. So Rebecca, in her view, she thought she will fulfill the plan of God through Jacob, not through Esau. Whereas we find uh, Isaac giving a lot of uh, interest and love to his eldest son Esau, where Rebecca gave that priority to Jacob. So most of these things that we find in the scriptures and also in the history of families, we do have dysfunctional uh, elements that we'll find in the families. We have, my question is, do we have in the church? And I say church, we are the people, we are the families. Certainly we have. We have? Certainly we have. Yes, sir, you had a question. In your family, you just have one daughter. What a fortunate uh, daughter you have. Both the father and mother love only one person. <laughs> but some of us, we have different, we have, uh, our parents have uh, children, four, five, six. I just realized that in Richard's father's family, there are 13 members. Am I right? Yes, and Richard's wife's family, there are 16 members. Strong family. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like, yes, my question this morning is, um, was, I'm not going to Isaac's family, was Jacob's family dysfunctional? Yes. Why do you say Jacob's family was dysfunctional? Anyone? Why was Jacob's? Do you agree that Jacob's family was dysfunctional? Yes. Yes? In what way was it dysfunctional? The first thing, he had uh, four wives. The first and foremost thing. There two is wives. A... And two ma ha handmaids. Uh, uh, okay, it's like wives only. I'll okay. agree with you. So children are from different mothers. And in the beginning, before his wedding itself, he loved Rachel, but he got married with her sister. Leah. He was not happy at all. So it has begun from the beginning. And he loved the children of Rachel more than the other. And there are many other incidences happens in his family. So his love towards Joseph was more than anybody else. Yes. If you see the life of Jacob, he had, yes, he had Leah and he had Rachel um, and the two handmaids, Bilah and uh, Zilpah. Zilpah. 
and they had children and uh, there was favoritism there was favoritism because he loved Rachel more and he didn't love Leah more Leah must have been a nice simple person maybe not as attractive or as beautiful as Rachel we say we we know Rachel was beautiful but her womb was sealed for some period of time so Rachel got four children no, no. Yeah. I mean, uh, Leah got four children uh, with Reuben and Simeon and Levi and Judah, Judah. four children and uh, Leah thought you know he loved me more because I'm giving him children but still the difference was there and Rachel in her she felt that insecure she gave her handmaid and then he got uh, children through the handmaid but then we could see the difference between these wives they were not happy and that was the root of evil root of evil where it was a dysfunctional family the wives couldn't get along the handmaids couldn't get along um, and the children couldn't get along because there was partiality within the family so we're taught a lesson here that yes it's a normal life in biblical times they lived normal lives but they were dysfunctional families we have in our church dysfunction another reason for dysfunctional families are where we have children who are addicted we can say addiction for many other things and it leads them in a different direction leads them in the, into a different direction let me see what it says here a dysfunctional family is a family in which conflict misbehavior and often child neglect or abuse on the part of individual parents occur continuously and regularly leading other members to accommodate such actions so we have to be very cautious and very careful how we bring up our family especially our children we'll go to uh, another in very interesting aspect about Jacob's ladder yes. would you like to elaborate on that uh? yes sir Jacob uh, in Hebrew it is called as lamb which means very silent person uh, same meaning is given to Noah is also a very silent person like Tam in Hebrew it was translated and we find Jacob being a person uh, a personality uh, even though he deceived his brother Esau with the birthright but Jacob had a commitment to the Lord he was not keeping good in his mind as he had his journey and we find in the history of of the Bible that uh, Jacob became the most important person who is named also as Israel later on we find in uh, Genesis chapter 27 and uh, his uh, family has been blessed and I think Jacob's life what I feel present in our church that we need to also have the uh, spiritual commitment even though we commit sin we we try to grab something else from somebody and we try to pose ourselves that we are, we are fine but through Jacob's life we need to find important thing element that we have to be strong in our spiritual life and the commitments yeah, we see that uh, in the story of Jacob's ladder I think it's one of the most fascinating stories uh, recorded in the Bible Jacob's ladder there's a beautiful song we are climbing Jacob's ladder what is what is behind this where was this Jacob's ladder where did Jacob dream this uh, in which place um, he had this dream at the plain land of Shinar so uh, that that is called as Bethel uh, after we find as soon as Esau learns that Jacob had received his father's blessing 
he understand that he has been deceived and supplanted by his brother so he ran from his brother and it was pitch dark and he is unable to quench that uh, thing that he has done to his brother and he pulled out some stones and lied down where he f- find uh, where he had a dream of ladder where angels are descending and ascending and this place is called as bethel as you find okay. in the bible so you had a question no um children are very very clever very smart i remember one incident when marky my eldest son was probably 4 years old 3 or 4 years old we used to come every day to the playground and they used to play um on the swings we had swings and ladders and they used to play and i used to play football and after my game was over i used to take both marky and andy back home we lived uh, beyond the bridge what we call as tiger gully we had the three bridges those days three bridges one bridge was over there second bridge was in between school and marathi church third bridge was near the grammar school where all the rain water is to go so we had three bridges so i remember we were walking one day back home and we came to this bridge and out of the blue marky asked me dad can we go to heaven i said go to heaven we can't go to heaven so yeah we can go to heaven i said no we can't go to heaven now yes we can go to heaven now it's quite curious as young boy about 4 years old is asking let's go to heaven we can go to heaven i said who told you can go to heaven yes we can go to heaven i said please explain I said dad you don't know in all this innocence he said we can go by jacob's ladder we can climb and go to heaven by jacob's ladder and i thought this young guy who's just about 4 years old probably in the sabbath school it must be sabbath school or at home when we taught him that jacob's ladder he had we can go to heaven by climbing jacob's ladder uh, we're told when angels ascend to heaven from the jacob's ladder it means our need before god the present the angels present our need before god ascending to heaven descending to descending with promises of divine assistance and protection interesting isn't it when angels come down in the dream it's telling to jacob i am there for you i will protect you and i will assist you ascending and descending and jesus is the connection jesus is the connection i like to read uh, what is found in page 382 in bible commentary uh, it's about the dream it says in the providence of god delay i like the word in the providence of god delay is often the means used to purify the soul if there is a delay don't be discouraged don't be disheartened it is often the means used to purify the soul and lead a man to cast himself without reserve upon god's mercy and grace isn't that beautiful that uh, sometimes when there is delay in our lives be patient be patient god is there and he will help us out i just want to point out a very interesting thing about this pillar about the place called bethel when jacob arose the next morning after the dream when he was dreaming he took that stone in ancient times in those biblical times they didn't have a nice feather pillow like we have today or a cotton pillow they had any hard surface they slept on hard surface so he took that pillow of stone and made a pillar there maybe t- made it vertical and anointed it and then the promise was made so lord when i return back this is going to be a place of worship 
a place of worship. That's why Bethel is called the house of God. So many churches these days have that Bethel, house of God. And we see that uh, in times of crisis and calamity, um, don't worry, we have the ladder where angels ascend and descend and Jesus is that ladder. There should be a communication. You can't function without communication. I'm a man of few words and my wife is a woman of many words, so we have a problem there. She speaks and I listen. She tells me, you speak and I will listen. But somehow it doesn't work out that way because I tell her I have one more than two years. So I listen more and speak less. But, but we need to communicate. I realize that we need to communicate. When we, when we need God's blessings, we need to have that communication line open between God and man. God and man. Um, we'll, we'll move further on. How many of you have been deceived? Another question. How many of you have been deceived? Everybody has been deceived? Can you give me an example how you've been deceived? There are many occasions, not one. Hey. So you, you are a person who's prone to be deceived, you can be deceived very easily? Uh, you know, the other person is more clever than me. Smarter. Smarter. You go to a vegetable shop or mango seller or food seller, every time he te cheat us. You know, he doesn't give one kilo. You know, we just bring it, we know that. He gives less, yet we just quietly take it and go. Go anywhere in shop, they cheat us. We know that. For example, in my uh, Kupera Park Society, there is a car shop where the grocer is. He takes much more than the outside price. We know that, yet we quietly go. <laughs> what can we do? So we get, we get deceived. Richard, have you been deceived any time? Many times. Many times. I remember one time I got deceived. I was coming, I was at Pune railway station, waiting to pick up someone, and I was standing outside the railway station, not inside. And one person walks very fast past me, stops back and comes to me again looks at me, taunt gentleman, and uh, smartly dressed, Malayalio. I said, well, again, Malayalio. I said, no, I'm not Malayali. <laughs> then he said, you, uh, you look like Malayali. Then he started talking to me. And he convinced me and he said, see, I just lost my baggage and all in the train and went. And uh, uh, I just need uh, some money to go back to uh, Kerala and I'll send you the money immediately. And he was so convincing and so, I mean, I got conned, if you could use the word. And in my, all my things, I gave him little money I had. I gave him 100 rupees. He said, thank you very much. I will send money to you. He never took my address. And after he went back, I said, I became a bakra. <laughs> you know, it's so easy. Some of us get deceived so easily. Here. Jacob deceived his brother and he was again deceived by his father-in-law. Father no, he was deceived by his own father-in-law. And uh, for your kind information, his father-in-law changed his salary. That means he deceived ten him times. ten times. <laughs> ten times. Now that was too much for to take. Yeah. Our salaries also change, but we're getting little higher salaries. <laughs> so, yes. Um, but Jacob did not, we told Jacob did not complain. Jacob did not complain at all. Um, I think I've written it somewhere. Okay, I'll come back to that. It says that. Jacob, in spite of his father-in-law being very harsh to him, and his father-in-law realized 
that the prosperity in his home was because of Jacob. Jacob was a very good man, uh, probably a good planner, good organizer. He did things well. He was accountable. And because of his faithfulness, God blessed him. God blessed him and uh, he was prosperous. And we're told that he did not want to live, leave or let Jacob leave and go and he kept on persuading to stay on there. Uh, can, we, can we look into the blessings of uh, the family that Jacob received? Yes. The blessings of the family of uh, Jacob, uh, as Sir said, he got married to Leah, who was the first daughter of Laban. But I think uh, through Leah, we have 12 tribes. 12 tribes been uh, as a blessing. It starts from uh, Reuben to Benjamin. We have all the 12 sons, uh, how they were a blessing. And Jacob, in his 20 years of his experience, like he was deceived, he deceived his brother, and later on he's deceived by his uh, father-in-law, Laban. And we find all things uh, coming across and the blessings of Jacob's family was so wonderful, sir. Even though he has come across a lot of uh, crucial situations in his life, but the commitment that he has taken, he depended on God, he reconciled, and uh, we find Sister Ellen White also tells that uh, the center of Jacob's story constitutes of more blessing more commitment, more reconciliation. So as children of God and members of this church, we need to have even that same uh, thing in our, in our lives. We tend to be deceived, but still God is blessing us. He is giving us abundant blessing. Many times we don't know how God would encounter it in our lives. But Jacob's family is a blessing that I can always believe so. I have one more question for anyone to answer. Do we see blessings when injustice is done? Do we see blessings when injustice is done? And how do we handle it? Uh, that's a tough question, sir. Yes. Now, one of my senior uh, men told me, when somebody press you hard down, you will it. bounce back higher, like, you know, the spring, they said. When you press the spring down more and more, when you leave, when it is left, it comes up higher. You know, when you pull back the arrow, more the uh, pull Tension. back, it goes higher and faster, they say that. Uh, when it is injustice is done, you know, it's very difficult. That process and that time you go through is very difficult. But there you are tested. Your faithfulness, your humbleness, your tolerance, what God expects from you at such time, you have been put into test. If you pass the test, definitely you are lifted much more higher and you are blessed. I believe that. It's <clears throat> happened to me. So there is blessings in injustice. But is, is uh, uh, when you see justice not done, people tend to get discouraged, disappointed. Why things are not going right? Why I'm treated unjustly or unjustly? Um, how, do, how do we respond? Pardon? We should wait upon the Lord, sir. We should wait when, upon the Lord. Yes. Let God judge and let God decide. Okay, it's very, it very easy, easy said than done. Yes, sir. 
humanly not possible what Sirisa says. How you can take when somebody is doing injustice and you can see it very clearly. They are partial to somebody, they favor somebody and they don't favor somebody. We see most of the time in office setup everywhere. It's very hard. I don't know how Sirisa says, wait upon the Lord, then he will do justice. Practically, it is not possible. I don't know. I want an answer for this. Okay. Humanly speaking, it's very, very difficult to comprehend it because some people get away with uh, it. But when you see the life of Jacob, like we saw, he was very unjustly treated by his own father-in-law. Unjustly treated. You know, and uh, here Jacob exercised patience and he was kind. But in, in the end, he asked, uh, Jacob asked his father-in-law, why have you deceived me? I, I can't hear you. J she says, Jacob deceived his brother. I'm talking to his father-in-law deceived Jacob. He's done with his brothers. Yes. Yeah, Jacob knew firsthand what it is to be deceived because he was a deceiver first. Yes, he knew very well when he was deceived by his own father-in-law. But Jacob here we told that, yes, he asked his father, why have you deceived me? He asked a question. Um, Psalm chapter 37 says, verse 1, do not fret because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. And if you keep reading, you will say that, you know, the, the, the wicked may seem to be prosperous. Those whose scheme may seem to be prosperous and going higher and higher, but they have their own reward in time. And the faithful who wait upon the Lord will definitely be rewarded in his own right time. God does everything beautiful in his own time. You, you said it, you know. Patience at such time is what more important. You are put to test in such time of injustice. Okay, thank, thank you. There comes a time in life when we are all sojourners. We all live in different different places and it's time to go back home it's time to go back home um, before we proceed Pastor Anthony would like to add to the lesson the, the, when such things or when we experience such things that is the time that we need to know as a carnal nature transit takes place from carnal nature to spiritual person he was fighting as a Jacob so that was a time to become Israel. So, so we are as a human nature, carnal nature, as a sinful nature. So God or anyone that's happening to us, such injustice, anything. So please think this is to transform or transit to a spiritual person. So that's what we experience, I understand. Okay. Thank you for your thoughts on it. Sir, can I add one point? Yes, yeah, sure. Before Jacob could go to Laban's house, his father-in-law's house, he met God already. God has already assured him of his presence, that angels were uh, ascending and descending on a ladder. I believe those who have experienced God's presence in their life, if what may happen in their life, even they have to fall and even they have to suffer something, but still that experience would always encourage them. That's how uh, I feel Jacob was able to take ten times. Ten times he was deceived. The one whom, whom he loved, he did not receive. It's because I believe this strongly, because uh, in the next step, he knew God that he would visit him. When he was coming back and he was uh, about to uh, visit or meet Isha, he sent all the family and he, left, he was left alone to meet God again, to take the strength from him. So God, each time... To meet God again or is frightened of his brother? He's frightened of his brother and he started praying there, sir. 
he wants to have that energy from god again so each time you are deceived each time you are low in your spirit better be like jacob go to the god and take the strength from him absorb the sap from him as he says i am the true vine and ye are the branches so i learned this lesson from jacob's life so, thank okay. you thank you let me read what it says here in our lesson uh, it says that uh, Jacob remained passive towards Laban and served him faithfully. Jacob knows well that he has been deceived by his father-in-law. Okay, let me go for. He said Jacob could have Jacob could have revolted, resisted, but he did not. He did not. He could have re resisted, he could have revolted. and says i am treated unfairly but jacob did not and he says here he just did good son in law said this all parents have good son in laws like jacob he just did what laban asked no matter how unfair it was how unfair it was jacob just listened to his father in law that was honoring in spite of being you are smiling in spite you know. of not being treated well he listen you know you are so helpless he is in a foreign land he is under somebody he has he could could have done nothing to his father in law he was so afraid he was subjugated so he could not revolt but one thing for sure he was very faithful committed and totally um what do you call uh, involved in the work what it was given to him he was too committed that is for sure yeah. because you see uh, jacob went to his own what we call today his own mama's home and he married his mama's own daughters so there should have been a strong bond he should have been afraid but yet he listened yet he listened and then we are told that eventually the time came when he realized he needs to go back to his home he was in a foreign land he was in a different place where his uh, uncle was there and re returns back to the land of his fathers and uh, we are also here we are all also sojourners in this place this is not our land and our land is in heaven so we also need to be prepared and keep going preparing ourselves for that uh, i know the second bell rang will conclude uh, richard would you like to conclude the lesson yes sir just read a uh, few comments from the sta bible commentary by sister ellen white she writes god chose jacob not because he deserved it but because of his grace only later did jacob start to understand the significant significance of god's grace and what it meant to trust god to live by faith and to be completely dependent on the lord so we find uh, he was uh, the supp supplementary for abraham and isaac abraham served for 100 years in the promised land and isaac did it and god used jacob now to be the minister of the lord and to continue uh, the ministry and we find here uh, jacob thought to gain a right to the birth right through deception but he found himself disappointed so in this earthly life we we certainly have choices we certainly um, tend to have a lot of things in our life but at the last it happens according to the will of the lord and we got to be his children thank you thank you everyone for participating and at least giving a listening ear to our lesson this uh, week next week our lesson is entitled as jacob israel so kindly prepare and come you can have a healthy discussion and learn we'll all bow our heads for prayer and i'll request pastor richard to lead us in prayer yes dear heavenly father want to thank you god for this blessed privilege that you have granted to us thank you lord for giving important insights from the life of jacob help us also to have the reunion with you so that we will always be committed in our life 
Thank you for the church and the members as we're going to participate in the divine hour. May you bless us, bless the speaker, and whatever that is going to share to us, may we keep it in our spiritual practice. Thank you, God, for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning and a very happy Sabbath to all of you present in church and the ones watching us online. Psalms chapter 7 verses 17 reads, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. To begin with our song service, let's all join our voices and sing hymn number 195, Showers of Blessings, 195. Say 
248, Oh, how I love Jesus. Hymn number 248. song will sing 369 bringing in the sheaves
can you and i see god matthew 5:8 says all those who are in pure in heart can see god blessed are the ones who have pure heart for they shall see god moses spoke with god personally face to face god spoke to us and all the people through prophets but when it comes to moses god spoke to him face to face and the face of moses radiated illuminated with the divine glory of god and moses had to put a veil when he came down from mount sinai he had to put a veil on his face because his face illuminated and radiated with the glory of god good morning to everyone and wish you a happy sabbath my dear brothers and sisters young and old i would like to extend a warm welcome to each one of you this morning as you worship the lord today as you worship the lord today may the countenance of our savior jesus christ shine upon each one of you and may our faces glow with the radiance of that of divine glory once again it is my privilege to extend a warm welcome to each one of you god bless us thank you good morning church a happy sabbath to each one of us god is good and all the time god is good and all the time so beautiful well uh, this morning i'm really pleased uh, to stand before you and say happy sabbath because it is happy and uh, love to see happy faces uh, but if there is anything um, uh, unlike uh, christ please forgive from the stage but uh, yes today this is the day that the lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it well very few announcements and we'll pay very close attention <laughs> we will have uh, the communion service uh, commemorated on the 11th of june 2022 um the second week of june let us uh, come prepared to meet the lord at his uh, table we have a uh, pathfinders overnight a camp uh and all the pathfinders and the club the pathfinders club will uh meet in the church premises that is today 28th of may 2022 and uh, by 6 o'clock if you are here you you'll you'll start going for your trip the trip the trip is not too long it's just behind the church and uh, they they have planned well for uh, an overnight camp that is really nice and um, these are the activities that they have planned uh, for the overnight camp this is the agenda assembly in church compound by 6 o'clock in the evening sundown worship pitching of tents pioneer session dinner skit preparation by each group pioneer activity uh, manners and etiquette session christian movie uh, name letters to god group activity each unit prepares an adver- uh, advertisement then games early morning walk individual morning prayer fresh up yeah freshen up then devotion regular pathfinder activities breakfast and dismissed and uh, the counselors <coughs> deepak sukumar vani sundaram samuel yera hina yera james name joel pearson ankita dipati elen sundaram riana rajkumar and shirin ninan 
So these are the people. And uh, anything, if, uh, members, you can just come and take a look uh, uh, as to how this camp is going on. Last time, uh, when it went, it was really nice. A uh, few of our members came to see how it was going on. They're very happy, and you have given your consent. I'm really happy about it. Even today, if you do that, that would be really very nice. <coughs> And um, the flowers this morning are contributed by Mr. Sandeep Ganta and family in thankfulness to God's mercies upon them. Then we have um, a Joel Pearson. He's not well. He has an operation in the knee. And I always uh, was thinking, because he's seen always. So I tell him, you should be taking rest. He said, no. And every week he's here, and uh, he breaches up the gap of uh, music and adds beauty to the accompaniment of uh, the church activities. And even for practices, never he's uh, uh, late or uh, misses. And uh, really would like to join the church to wish you all the best and recover soon because a uh, lot more to go with you uh, from the point of music, church music. Yes, uh, the morning Sabbath school, it's very nice. Thank you very much. Uh, the team of uh, Sabbath school teachers. It's really nice. I'm happy. And um, the lesson study by Pastor Vara Jacob and Pastor Richard John. Uh, the interaction was very nice. The, uh, the, the coordination is very nice. I, I really appreciate if you come a little earlier and uh, uh, make it more lively the way it was today. And uh, that is something really appreciable. And uh, it, it gives us more knowledge of the things uh, that we study during this time. And um, I'll just read the prayer request. Let's pay close attention and then we'll dispose for our prayer bands. Let us pray for the victims of uh, C-19. Um, still there are cases here and there. And uh, let's also remember the war situation in the Eastern Europe. Let us uh, continue to pray for uh, Zoe and Ranjit Smith Olivia Gladwin Ball, she is still suffering. Let us uh, uh, pray for her. Ashley Pakare, uh, he is uh, gradually improving. And um, uh, Ms. Cheryl Pakare, she sent a note saying, uh, thank you, church, for the wonderful uh, uh, consideration of uh, prayers. Because uh, more than any family, the church family is to be considered the foremost. And our prayers are always good for healing. And uh, Number of prayers are really considered, and I'm, I thank you, Church, for uh, the diligence for your prayers. Let us also remember uh, Swalanlata Raju, Lavlina Leban Rav, uh, Vinod Barasakal, um, and Veronica Takwale. Let us also pray for the mothers to be, uh, some are at the verge in the next month, if I'm not mistaken, and then now uh, forward. So our prayers would be a fencing around them that there would be no accidents and uh, everything would go as per the plan. <clears throat> Let us pray for um, uh, our retirees and their well-being. And um, uh, really nice to have you elders of the church, uh, the retirees, for you are the source of blessing to the church and uh, you're a blessing to the children as well. Uh, if you can really make it, please uh, do come. But if you really cannot make it, uh, then uh, we have this... Uh, online services, we can make use of that. Then uh, let us uh, pray for the leadership of our Adventist church, uh, be it education and uh, healing ministry, let us pray for them. Let us uh, pray for the world political leaders too and the police force. Let us remember of each and every member of the Seventh-day Adventist church around the world. And last but not the least, let us pray for the church board members as we come together to enhance a few more ideas and idioms and thoughts when we come together and definitely implement them for the edification of the church. Shall we now um, uh, disperse uh, for our prayer bands? Let us group ourselves into twos and threes, and uh, we will come back. Thank you.
thank you very much, Church, for your diligence in prayers. And um, also, let us uh, uh, uphold uh, the GC sessions that would be held soon, that uh, the Holy Spirit would take uh, full control over these sessions. And um, every activity that goes on would uh, definitely go by the wish of the heavens. Let us uh, continue to pray for them. And this morning, um, the speaker is our pastor. Please uh, pray for him and uh, his family and relatives because uh, each member is somewhere related and I'm still looking forward to uh, how the relation is. <laughs> I'm really happy. Let us invite him to the pulpit. Please uh, pray for me as I bring the word. May the good Lord add the double portion of the blessings as we continue to worship in the beauty of his holiness. Righteous uh, God, thank thee for this moment of Sabbath to come into your presence. O oh, bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. And let every word that proceedeth out of my mouth could be acceptable in our sight. We invite the master preacher this morning, dear Lord, through me, but not me, 
Take full control, my Father. This is my sister asking in Jesus' name. Amen. morning and a blessed Sabbath church. The speaker of the hour has chosen a scripture from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 3 verses 1 to 10. Now Peter and John went together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to, to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with, with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. May God bless the portion of the scripture that has been read. For the hymn of praise, let us all rise and sing hymn number one. Praise to the Lord.
I request the congregation to reverently kneel down as we seek the Lord in prayer. Holy and righteous God, grateful to you, Father, for inviting each one of us into your holy sanctuary on the holy Sabbath day to worship you and praise you and thank you, Father, for what you are and what you have done. We are grateful to the Father for blessing each one of us to be part of your mission in the last days, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the whole church especially the leadership in all levels, beginning from GC to divisions and unions and conferences and sections and regions and churches. And we also pray for the educational institutions, medical institutions, in the orphanages and old age homes, and also the supporting agencies. We thank you so much, Lord, for choosing each one of us to be part of your mission, God of heaven, at this juncture, especially we remember, Lord, our beloved brothers and sisters who are going through such uh, situations, having illness, admitted in the hospital, also taking rest in the house, and uh, getting Father in heaven well. We also pray, Father, for people who are discouraged and dismayed, and also suffering due to financial crisis, and many, many issues are there, Lord in our lives, and especially we have a, a number of requests before you, Lord. We pray for the people who have been victimized for the COVID and the Omicron. We pray that you would bless them, Father. We also have uh, some of our young people, uh, Sister Laulina, Sister Elvia, and many, many are in our community uh, not uh, keeping well, Lord. We pray that you would stretch forth your healing hands upon them and touch them, Father, and give them the support from heaven, the power from heaven, so that they will be healed, Lord, to praise you and thank you. At this juncture, we pray for the institutions in this campus. We pray for the Western Indian Union and the leadership and all the workers there. We pray for the Adventist, Adventist Media Center, the leadership and the workers. We also pray for the estate and the leadership and the workers, Lord. We also pray for hospital, Father in heaven. Pray for the leadership, the doctors and the nurses and the administrators, God of heaven. Continue to bless them, Father. We also pray, Father, for the Him Kamal Life Center. May you bless the institution, especially Father in heaven. We pray for uh, uh, Nibiaji, and may you bless his family members, Lord. We also pray for uh, the publishing house and also all the workers working in that institution's Lord. We pray for this church, the pastor and his wife and daughter. Bless them, bless their ministry. We submit all of us into the Lord for the day, especially pray that you would bless our worship and especially, Father, as your servant brings the message, may we all be filled with, uh, with, with the spirits so that we will be benefited, Lord, by this word. We thank you so much, Lord, for once again, for all of us, the singing group and praising group and praying group and everyone who is part of this church. Bless us all. Thank you so much, Lord. And may we be request you to forgive our sins and shortcomings. We also remember, Lord, the forthcoming GC meeting. We pray for uh, the leadership there, the meetings, and also people will be traveling around the globe. May you bless them, Father. May they all uh, reach safely to have uh, the business transaction as per your will. May we all feel your presence, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord, for this church. 
to proclaim the gospel, especially three angels' messages, Lord. Continue to bless all of us because I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The key text for the offertory reading today is found in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 19, a familiar text, and it reads, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. God is our supreme provider. We give tithe of all because our Lord is the provider of all. After his victory against a powerful coalition, Abraham gave a tithe of everything, food, goods, and possessions, to Melchizedek the priest. Jacob, his grandson, promised to return a tithe of everything. According to the book of Leviticus, a tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. Jesus himself acknowledged the tithing was from all that I get and from the minutest gain. So what could be the reason for the emphasis on tithing everything? Ellen G. White in her book, Council on Stewardship, has something to say in this matter. She says, the real value of tithe is not monetary but symbolic. It reminds us to acknowledge and remember God as the giver of all. He asks us to acknowledge him as the giver of all things. And for this reason, he says, of all your possessions, I reserve a tenth for myself, besides gifts and offerings, which are to be brought into my storehouse. A partial tithe would mean that God is the giver of only part of what we need. In a world of uncertainties and confusion, the exercise of tithe from everything, which is an apex of total dependence on God, will definitely contribute to our inner peace. As we worship with our tithe and regular offerings, we can grow in heavenly peace. I now call upon the deacons to collect tithe and offerings. From the 
moment that I wake up until I lay in my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of It's all right. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we praise you, Lord. 
because in you there is perfect peace. You are a supreme provider. You are the giver of all things. Help us, Lord, to acknowledge this through our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings. In Jesus' name, I pray. Check, Check. 
Amen. Was the song beautiful? If there is no answer, then I have to sing. And I'm sure you'll regret it. <laughs> I really thank um, all the singers, um, young and energetic uh, uh, girls who have come together in agreement to sing praise uh, to the Lord. And I, I really marvel about the musicians and uh, our church musicians there is a peculiar thing about them you give them an instrument they play all rounders and um, when I saw Sean I felt he's an all-rounder even I'm also an all-rounder because I have to go around and see whether playing they're playing good or not yeah I'm also an all-rounder yeah keep it a little more <laughs> but beautiful <clears throat> And I'm, I'm, I'm happy this morning because I'm standing here, <clears throat> and um, usually, thank you, uh, usually I sit behind or uh, somewhere uh, at the back, but um, today when I sit here, I saw a few new faces. And uh, thank you very much for making it uh, to this church uh, in particular. The uh, first few rows uh, do not know your name, but uh, I'm really happy that you're here and smiling on the Sabbath morning. And two sisters here, Suhasni and uh, Sumalini, and uh, two sisters over there. Um, of course, not sisters, mother and child, but they look alike. Yeah, it's really nice to have uh, you worship with us where Jesus is the main attraction and not any one of us. And as I requested, continue to pray that... Um, I may bring Jesus and not me as I speak. And this morning, <clears throat> um, I should thank each one individually that you have agreed uh, to come to make an appointment uh, at the gate called Beautiful. That's my title. Gate called Beautiful. As we make this appointment, we will be meeting few characters and see how uh, they could uh, help us edify ourselves. The circumstances and the situations that I have encountered over there, let us see in a while, because it's already 11. And I say by 11 we have to close uh, the summertime. And the challenge uh, has uh, rebounded to me. And let's see how well I can do. In case if I'm going, taking a little long, um, the Holy Spirit is taking over me. Have patience. But we'll conclude very soon. All right, now we... <clears throat> crossed the normal times and have got into trouble times. A few years back, March 2019, everything was so normal, so nice, so beautiful, so uh, auspicious. But March, everything came together to separate us. And somewhere we have to, we are bound to the government. And whenever they say, hey, boo, we all went into the houses and hid ourselves. Of course, that is for good, no problem. And whenever the, the government says, it's okay, we come out, do our things, our works. And whenever they say, you, we get back. And this C19, coronavirus 2019, has come in 19 and never left us. And don't know when it'll go. It mutates, I believe. Trouble, uh, uh, troubled times that we live are not so easy for us to have a plan and work and don't know whether it will be successful. Everywhere it is so tightened. That leisure is gone. 
jobs are gone certain decisions what we make uh, went wrong when i was thinking about it it was uh, the similar kind of uh, a situation for the prophets of the old it was not that uh, okay everything said it and i'll come and pronounce and it happens no they do they did work against the adverse situations uh, uh, the, the kind of adverse situations uh, is something like uh, i don't know if i have to give up my life i have to give it up but at i will do the work of the lord they are working against the adverse and still called fire from the heaven they're still working against the adverse and called cool and refreshing water from the rock again it's the adverse against adverse situation they grind into a city and turn the city upside down and the text today the circumstance of the story is as powerful as it is in these times i really don't know what to teach our children to expect because anything that we expect and go all that we have to face is unexpected unexpected situations and this generation of jews they have lost the power in their own land they lost power they lost control it is their land but they have no say and they are not fully deputized and empowered to be able to function in their own environment they are op- oppressed by rome not like a uh, Uh, their forefathers in babylon not like their forefathers uh, in egypt they are not uh, uh, fully oppressed so they say we will control your finances we will control your money but yet you can have your churches it is one thing to have a uh, 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 um, oppressed in a foreign land but it is another thing to be oppressed in your own home it is my house but i have got no say about it and rome is in a situation sorry a jew is in a in a situation like that it is like you are in your own trial your own uh, in your own uh, problem in a familiar environment and not be empowered in your own situation such were the times they had to come to the roman government and take permission of uh, before they could be uh, before they could do anything because rome controlled them they were a colony of rome and rome said we will control the money at you can have your church almost church became a pacifier while rome took control over it has been such a long time that you can uh, you can tell as to where the government ended and the church began in fact they called it as a herod's temple my question when did uh, herod got to have a temple when herod got his hand into the temple and herod is uh, started making money this is the reason we find jesus flipping over the tables he did not uh, turn over the tables upside down because the people were selling cakes to buy in the church but it is because the herod brought his hand uh, into the uh, church people were giving it's not wrong to give to god but a herod uh, tax them heavy on their giving and this is the reason as to why jesus uh, had had to turn the tables upside down there are money exchangers they take all the va- uh, uh, valid uh, money currencies and changed it into accepted currency to pay the temple tax and many more what if jesus have to come to our church world this morning 
we would find him a flip or a few tables over the things that he finds. Because somewhere we have confused the gospel with our own perspectives and opinions. Gospel is the same. The kind of approach that we give, the kind of opinion that we give, we have confused the crowd. And today we are diverse in approaching the same gospel. You say, yes, that is correct what she is doing, what he is doing. And we have another brother say, no, 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 no. You read the gospel proper. We have too many perspectives. And we have confused the world today with our own perspectives towards the gospel. And Jews at this particular juncture, they wanted independence. Even the people that we find who are following Jesus, they did not follow Jesus that they could uh, act like him and uh, 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 do tricks like magicians. <clears throat> But that they have some underlying motive. <clears throat> when will you restore the kingdom? They really meant, uh, when will you give us back the control of our own land that we live? <clears throat> calling him uh, the Messiah, calling him as the king of Jews, gave them a hope <clears throat> that they would stop being a colony. And that they felt that Jesus is good enough or strong enough to fight. <clears throat> they will fight, I mean, Jesus will fight and bring back the control. But it was too unfortunate. It was too de depressing. And they were so bewildered that Jesus didn't fight. He died. They beat him half to death. Yes, Rome did. The Lord of glory died. My question to you, my brothers and sisters, how do you preach a powerful sermon, a powerful message, when the one you are preaching got beat to death? That's why Thomas he said, I'm through with it. I'm out. And he walked away. We blame Thomas. But there are certain things that hurt us. And there are certain hurts that carry too much pain. That some, at times it is not lawful to be uttered out. But the pain and the agony that you're carrying is too bad that it will shake you down to your toes. And you don't want anything to be reminded of that situation anymore. And certain pains become so tough that you don't want certain pictures in the home. You try to block the faces all out of the Facebook, out of media, Instagram, and many more. People are carrying. Maybe you might, you might be one now. <clears throat> you, didn't even, you don't even want to have a sign of it again. And Thomas says, unless I see the nail prints on your palm and I feel it and where it appears on the side, I could see and feel it, I will not believe. Sometimes we feel, man, he's too crazy here. Somewhere we have to get the job done. No, 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 no. Jesus respected Thomas. And at this juncture, Judas hung himself. Peter went to cousin. Everything was falling apart. All hell broke loose. Jesus died. But he rose. He came to his own. And the own received him not. He stood up on the Mount of Olives and wept over Jerusalem. Few times that Jesus wept is one for Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. How oft would I uh, have gathered uh, you as a hen did uh, her chicks? But you, my brethren, are not willing so. 
And because Jesus died, many celebrate his death. It's for me, my Lord. And many people who celebrated in his death did not respect him in life. Do you agree with me? And, that, and that's what happens today. People name after you after you're gone. But when you're there, nobody cares. Have you ever felt that? Such was the situation. Jesus died and rose from the dead. And he showed himself only to certain kind of people. After showing up himself for 40 days with infallible proofs, he stepped on a cloud and ascended to heaven, leaving the disciples who were gazing at him and felt all their dreams are disappearing in the air. Then said the angel to the disciples, E men of Galilee, what are you doing here, man? You're looking up and you're lost into thoughts. The same Jesus who is ascending will descend in the like manner. Go and preach the gospel. Preach the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he says, uh, <clears throat> You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. Acts 1 8. You shall receive power. Power not to make myself great. Power not to, not for me that I could expose at all places. And it is me and not my God. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. And you shall be, sorry, you shall receive power that you would be witnesses for me. That's a great text. We have very great text. Can we be a witness uh, to the Lord? Just want to refer John 1. One of few verses. Just come with me. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a, a God. All things were made by Him, and uh, anything that was made was not made without him, yeah? And in him was life, and the life was light of men, okay, next. And there was a man sent uh, uh, from God whose name was John. This is where I want you to ponder upon. Let me read this. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men might have, all, uh, all men might believe in him. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear the witness of the light. And uh, when angel was speaking to this man of Galilee who was gazing uh, 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 on the clouds where Jesus was sitting and ascending, he said, go preach the gospel. And as you do it, you shall receive power. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And you will be witnesses, not witnessing for yourself, you're witnessing for heaven, for God, for what he has taught uh, uh, 33 and a half years. And that you'll be witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria, and armored parts of the world. There is no limited territory that you can be a witness for. And now, Peter and John, they came to this temple, to the synagogue. They came, and, uh, they came to give a last ditch uh, um, attempt to give Jerusalem a final chance to recognize Jesus, that he is the Messiah. Because Jesus is through with it. He said not even a stone would be standing on another and he's gone. He said, I'm done. I'm out of here. And Peter and John are coming to the synagogue at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. By the way, who, who is Peter and John? Peter and John are the inner circle of Jesus. 
Now, don't uh, uh, look at this from the perspective of politics. But these are the inner circle of Jesus. You can't take everybody all the time. <clears throat> and there's no need to think that why am I left? That's what, that's what went wrong in heaven. <clears throat> these people were at the Mount of Transfiguration. These people were at the Garden of Gethsemane on that silent night. Leaving the disciples, he took this tree, little went forward, and made a, 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 a supplication to them. They're the inner circle of Jesus. Somewhere even we have inner circles. We have, we are with everybody, but we have somewhere a inner circle. And these were the cream of the crop. These were the Jesus' choice servants coming to the synagogue at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. They came to synagogue not because uh, they, agree, they, had an, they agree with the synagogue because Jesus was rejected. The synagogue has rejected Jesus. And these are the apostles of Jesus. If you don't... Uh, uh, if you have rejected the master, ultimately you'll reject the followers too. There are clashing of kingdoms. At, they have the audacity to come to the synagogue and preach what the synagogue thought it was a cult. So they don't accept a warm welcome. And the synagogue did not expect that these people would uh, have the audacious attitude to walk up to the assembly and preach something contrary to what the synagogue believed. And they did not expect that uh, these people will run into the layman who was sitting at the gate called Beautiful at the temple. And even the layman never felt uh, that he would run into them. There was no appointment on the date, uh, date book for this to happen. Somewhere, we need to understand this. But God in his sovereignty, sovereign ability indeed, have orchestrated the affairs of men. He sets up appointments that, he, that even you don't know that it is an appointment. You just have to walk in it and it just happens. Not in your own power, but there is a man behind called God. He, orchest he orchestrates. He sets the appointments. Have you ever had an appointment with God and felt uh, in the appointment uh, how it looks to have an appointment with him? I don't know, meeting you would change my life. Meeting you would change the trajectory of how I see myself. Such is the text. Because the layman used to be a layman. What would you do when people refer to you, refer you as layman? Not layman. Lame man. What would you do if uh, people have to refer to you as a drug addict? What would you do if people are supposed to refer you as a cheater and a warmonger? And somebody uh, names your weakness and all in the room knows uh, whom they're talking about. How do you feel it? Everybody knows that he is a layman. They never called him by name. They called him by his condition. Though his condition revealed what he was, what he is now in a text. Have you ever had a condition that defined you or who you were? It swallowed up your name. Such was the case with the lame man. Because they always think, yeah, we know that lame man who was sitting at the gate called Beautiful at the temple and he's begging. Never called him by name. 
even though he spent his whole life begging. His hands were not broken. I want you to pay close attention to this. His hands were not broken. There was no problem in stretching forth his hands. There is nothing wrong in the brain and thinking. He was not blind like Bartimaeus. His spine was not twisted. In fact, 90% of his body was functional. It was just the ankles and the feet were broken. 10% has pulled down the 90% of himself. Isn't it a funny how one thing that you have gotten in life that broke you has brought your complete life down? Have you, have you ever had that kind of situation where you had just one thing that has broken you and the entire self is brought down to your knees? One thing that you know, recollect, that has limited your moments, that has limited your activities, it has stopped your opportunities. One thing in life, can you ever recollect now? What is that one thing that has stopped you from everything? 90%. He was strong and healthy. It was just 10% of his deficiency which brought him down. That's why it is not good for you to poke your nose into others' affairs and talk about them. Because everybody has got something that is not working right. Amen? Yes? Is there anybody who has got everything right uh, that I can pass on judgments? Uh, oh, she is like this. Forget about her. Oh, she, I don't even care about him. No, even I have something that is not working right. Everybody has something that doesn't work right. And this something work, not working right can be camouflaged by the accruements of the success. It can be your accolades or uh, uh, being famous or beautiful until somebody recognizes it, until somebody witnesses, somebody realizes it. And they say, oh, you're so beautiful, but just that you're a little bit crazy. And this man never walked. There is no mental cognitive uh, memory of him standing, uh, standing up on his feet. His muscles had no memory. His nerve endings had no memory standing up on his feet. Indeed, he came out of his mother's womb with his ankles broken. And so, he devised a nice system. He knew he had a deficiency. And he uh, devised a nice system of uh, his own deficiency and he started having enablers. And the enablers are the people who brought him every day, they carried him to the same place at the same time and gave him a bowl to beg. Enablers. Have you ever had, had enablers in your life who carry you to the same place every day and there is no change that becomes your routine? And as long as there are enablers that surrounded you, these are your choice people that carried you in your times of trouble to the same place, same time, same thing, no, no change. As long as you have enablers, you'll never get better. Because enablers, once you get better, they have no job to do. They have no importance that they can get. And this, he devised it in such a way that every day he waited for them. When they, when they came to him, they carried him and put him at the gate called Beautiful at the Temple. And people the righteous people who passed by, who went into the synagogue and come out, looked at him and felt pity uh, 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 
upon him and uh, gave him alms. How do you devise your deficiency? This morning, my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> how do you devise? We know we have a deficiency somewhere in life, somewhere around you, somewhere in your family, somewhere in your workplace, somewhere in your church, somewhere with your neighborhood. You have a deficiency. How would you work with it? How would you devise the system? Are you trying to rely on your enablers? And what I see, the picture of the layman is the picture of synagogue. The synagogue has been functioning for years, but there is no glory in the Holy of Holies. Holiest of Holies. No glory. They have found a system to function without glory for years. They have problem everywhere. And they have set system, and if you move a little bit out, they have a problem. And they, and the synagogue was just as lame in its religiosity as the layman. So we got a layman sitting at the lame church. It fits into the lameness because how can the lame church say anything about the lame man? Both uh, of them got something that doesn't work. Somewhere, unleash yourself and think and see of the things that you can see through the help of the Holy Spirit. Not to tighten yourself in situations that people may say something. No. Remember, you are the witnesses. And when Peter and John had stepped in, have come to him, all that the layman was looking, all that he was looking was for arms. And what they got was something unexpected. This is a similar situation at times we get. Whenever we have uh, 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 people who are doing good, uh, uh, it can be friends or relatives uh, uh, or classmates, whenever they visit, we have uh, some thing called expectation. And the expectation can be, okay, bring me uh, a nicer sneakers, uh, bring me some nice uh, shirt, uh, bring me something. And at times, just feel that uh, when they come in, when you're uh, looking, when your expectation is for a meager thing, and they say, get ready, I'm taking you to U.S. It's not that U.S. is a better place than here. However you make it, that's a better place for you. But how is it? I'm going to change my life. And you start thinking beyond where you are standing right now. Such was the case. All that he was looking forward for, arms, but they have got something else beyond that he never dreamt of. So John, he fastened his eyes on this layman and grabbed the attention. But Pete, Peter... He cannot resist what he has. He says, um, silver and gold have a none, but such, uh, I say, I give it to thee. It is still not a him. I want you to uh, take this as a footnote. He's not still giving by himself. He said, such as I say, I give, it, give I unto thee, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. So what he did is, he gave his hand and pulled the man out. A differentiation, let's do a little work. The enablers are lifting him and putting him at the gate. And Peter also lifted him by his hands. What is the difference here? The enablers have carried him and placed him so gently. Oh, careful, he's a lame man. He cannot walk. Oh, they were so uh, nice to him. And made him so comfortable that that became a comfortable zone for, for him and the enablers. They got their attention. Maybe they got their pay. In, according to the situation that we are in. But Peter, because Peter and John, they are not uh, enablers. They are evangelists. They are evangelists. 
And whenever you have an evangelist come in, in your situation, they will not make your situation so comfortable. They will disrupt. All hell breaks loose. You have to do something which is not normal, which is, which is beyond, which is not ordinary, which is extraordinary. These are called evangelists. Have you met them one? If you knew, uh, 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 Moody, D.L. Moody and Sankey, uh, there is a man by name, uh, Horatio uh, Spafford, working with these people. He, uh, 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 in his life, he lost uh, his business in uh, Chicago. He lost his two daughters for uh, being sick. Another two or three daughters uh, on the voyage on sea. And he got a, 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 a kind of note from his wife, uh, saved alone. And then sitting at the shores, he wrote a beautiful hymn that today we sing, so nice. What is that song? Yes, it is. It is well with my... How can you say whether it is well with your soul when you lost all the children? When you lost all your business? When you lost all yourself? But I respect this man. This is what happens uh, when an evangelist uh, enters into your situation. When an enabler comes into your situation, he, he, uh, they, they, they'll make you very comfortable. So nice. It's routine. If you're late, they say, hey man, you're two minutes late. But unexpected things happen. And these people are witnesses. That's what the angel was saying. I want you to be witnesses unto the Lord. And not only in these three places, uh, 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 Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, but at the uttermost parts of the world. Your life uh, today, uh, we, uh, the song that uh, Heresio uh, Spifford wrote, it's not only sung in one church. It is sung in all churches. It is so nice. Have you ever met an evangelist? Number two, are you willing to be an evangelist? That is being a witness. He said, rise up and walk. And the lame man got on his feet. And as he was opening his mouth and spoke, I'm talking about Peter. As he opened his mouth and started speaking, there is a miracle that had happened. I don't know what physics and chemistry was there inside. But the Bible says uh, his ankle bones and feet uh, received the strength uh, that he stood on his feet uh, and he jumped and leaped uh, and praised God. And this morning, I'm so overwhelmed with the joy because uh, I serve a God who likes relationships more than the religion. I serve a God who sees the unexpected and does the impossible. He taught me to say, if you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. Have you ever tried seeing the invisible? That's your foresight. The Lord whom I serve, he, he, he speaks to the mountains and says, go fall into the sea. He comes to meet his disciples walking on the waters. He stops funerals and raises the dead. That is the God I serve and I'm happy about it. Are you with me, my brothers and sisters, this morning? He goes into the weddings and turns water into wine. I am privileged to serve such a God Almighty who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can think or ask. Have you met my God? My God is so great that he sleeps in the middle of the storm. Have you met my God? He cast demons out of legions. Have you met my God? He pays taxes from the fish's mouth. Have you met my God? He refuses to die at the whipping post. Have you met my God? The greatest thing of my God that I witnessed this morning is that he prays for the people who are crucifying him. Have you met my God? Can you have the instant of the God that we serve this morning? Yesterday, I, was so, it, I felt so good. 
talking about forgiveness. Can you forgive? The very act of my Lord, your Lord and my King, he was dying, he was in pain, he was in agony. Oh, everything was falling apart. But still, he gathered all himself, he gathered all his head to utter these beautiful words, to Lord, forgive them, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Have you and I got the guts to say that I know I don't like the, his ways. I, don't, I know I don't like him. I don't like anything of him. Eh, the Lord, forgive him. Can you and I, as a family of God, say something like this? Unexpected. At the expected time. This one appointment, if it can bring in a little change, oh, there will be great joy in heaven. After you go away, when somebody asks you, what was the sermon all about? Don't say, a, a, a church pastor had a problem. He had some issues with a, a, a lame man who was sitting at the gate called Beautiful at the temple. And he was talking all about, uh, very negative about that man. I don't know, some issues that pastor had. No, 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 no. It is your appointment at the gate called Beautiful at the temple. And, and, and these... Uh, uh, the kind of uh, situations that went around, the currents that went around this gate called beautiful would change our perspectives in life. That is the purpose of my uh, uh, talk. If it could change, if it could bring in a change. It's not even a sermon. It is just gleaning a few principles out of the situation at the gate called beautiful. Thank you. To bring this divine hour to a close, shall we all rise and sing song number 254, 254, The Great Physician. <laughs>
Shall we bow in prayer? Our Father which art in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this time that we had when we could sit and listen to your voice. Lord, is the sweetest name that was ever sung, the sweetest name that was ever told to us. You are the great physician, Lord, and we believe we need you more than ever. We have challenges, we have difficulties, but we pray, Lord, as we step out into the week ahead, that your presence will be there with us, your presence will go with us, and you will provide a solution where there's a problem. You will be the way for us. You will lead the way. May we go, Lord, from here, from this place of worship, rejoicing and praising your name, looking forward to that great day when we could sit with you and sing songs of praise. Thank you ever so much. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Our Father, <clears throat> who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now may the love of our Heavenly Father and the grace of our Lord and Master Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet fellowship and the companionship of our Holy Spirit God Abide with each one of us now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 